time to really start your reflection and start to take notes. So what we're going to share today is not a challenge for you to get this done in the next, you know, 24 or 48 hours. You're going to receive a lot of information today that will start your thinking. And you will, on your Friday follow-up, no later than Monday, you'll get the worksheets that will go over towards the end. What's really important is that you do spend some time because business planning really is taking what you know to be today and how you want it to be different in the future. But also what makes this year unique is the market that we started with is not the market that we're in now. So you're really going to have to focus on what's going on in your business in the last 60 days. I feel that's way more representative of what you can expect moving forward. So sadly, you're not going to have as much data as you would if you were doing a 12-month analysis of, of what that looks like. I also want you guys to, I want to challenge you to be realistic because in, in, I'm, I'm speaking from a moment of truth. Sadly, I have had to really get to a point where I'm really facing reality of what I think 2023 is going to look like because whenever you're budgeting and you're making commitments to spend money or you're making commitments whether you're going to continue to spend money, doing so in reality versus what you hope it to be is really important to keep your credit card balances from growing and your bank accounts not. And so it is, it is really a good time for you guys to, to, you know, what subscriptions do I have and what's about to renew? What subscriptions am I looking at that's going to cost money? And remember, your time, in, your time is money because typically it means that you got to get to where you're going, which costs you money. And I also like to, to come to, at, to business planning at a place where I know what my time is worth from a dollar standpoint. And there's two ways of looking at what your time is worth. Is it worth what it, if you take what your income has been and divide it by your, your, the number of hours that you, you, you work, that's what your time is worth based on the history. But how is that different based on the future and understanding what your time is worth? Because then it's, you know, then you make decisions on, well, is this the best use of my time whenever you're deciding what it is that you're going to do? Or am I better off partnering up or, or hiring out some of the services that may not cost as much as what your time is worth? And it's something that really sucks the energy out of you. So I say all that because I think that it's really a perfect time to be thinking about business planning, but it takes a lot of thought. So here it is the middle of October. What I want you guys to really be focusing on, and I don't mind helping you through this process on one-on-ones, or we can start forming little accountability groups, which I highly recommend that you do. Um, and really, but use this time and all that you're going to be presented with today just to start the thinking process. Give yourself to really the end um, of... What do you mean? Uh, uh, Layden, mute yourself. My bad. Um, Make sure that you are, you've got a deadline for getting this business plan put together and keep it simple because chances are you aren't going to have the extra money to pay people to, you know, to leverage people and services because, you know, we just might have a lighter year next year. And so if that's the case, just don't spread your stress <clears throat> open. You know, find what it is that you enjoy doing and go bigger with that instead of trying to be everything to everybody. Um, did you guys work on uh, your branding from last week? Did anybody have some quiet time to really think? Michelle, if you're talking, you're on mute. Well, that so sucks because I shared some good information. 
Um, we'll be so, happy for you to share it again. Yeah, yeah, I'll say it differently. So how many of you guys on the Zoom call worked on your uh, branding in the last week? All right, so really, I mean, if you guys were my coaching students, I would tell you right now to get your calendars out and put that on your books. You really need to spend some time on your, you know, and it really needs to be 30 minutes a day assessing where am I showing up? What is my common language? Who am I? How am I presenting myself to other people? And how do I want that to be differently? Your brand is your name and your face. That's where business planning really begins because you got to know the true identity of who you are and how you authentically want to do business. So um, today we're going to talk about more of the numbers part of business planning. Um, and it's going to take some reflection. And um, for those of you guys on Zoom, I'm going to repeat what I just said. The business that you guys have done for the last, I mean, typically whenever you're doing business planning, I have you pull out last 12 months worth of, of sales records and really figure out, did I do buyer sides? Did I do seller sides? Where did the, where did the business come from? Was it referral based? Was it people I paid for? How much did I pay? What's the conversion on referrals versus the conversion on my paid leads? Like you would assess all of that information. What I feel makes this business planning session way different is because the market has shifted and changed so much that really you need to look back and do it really a, a 60 day look back on how the business changes have affected you. Um, Brady, you still can't hear me? Brady can, uh, Brady, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me thumbs, thumbs up or down? We can hear okay. you. Okay, cool. All right. So that was just old. That's just an old post. So if you have not already put it on your calendar, every 30 minutes every day, you really need to be reflecting on your business. How did I present myself to people? Is it really how I want them to see me? And what do I need to tweak and change about how I'm presenting myself to the public so that it aligns with my brand? I gave you guys core values. For, it's a core values worksheet that you can go through. And if you will spend the time to first start with the core values and figure out who you truly are and, and how from the inside, what, what makes you think and react and, and respond the way you do, it's going to be based on your core values. And you will likely find if you reflect back on some of the business transactions you've done in the past, the ones that just really didn't bring you much joy, they just seem like a real struggle to get to even talk to that person because you're like, oh, I don't even want to call him. You will probably find that person did not have aligned with your core values, whatever your core values are. So when you get real clear about who you are and what your core values are, it's a lot easier to business plan because you know you want more of those people that brought you so much joy and the transactions were easy. Sometimes that means that you need to focus more on the buyer side. Okay, well, what, from a business planning standpoint, what does that mean for you? Sometimes that means you want to focus more on the seller side. What does that mean for you? And then you got to break it down is if you're going to work on buyers, are you talking about investors? Are you talking about first time home buyers? Are you talking about move ups, move downs? Like getting really clear about who you want to do business with moving forward because you're planning your business and creating what it is you want more of. All right, so it's going to take some self-reflection time for you guys to do this if you're going to build an authentic business. So that's why I say put 30 minutes on your calendar every day. And if you're a morning person, do it in the morning when the birds are chirping and you're drinking your coffee. If you're a nighttime person, then do it outside whenever everything's quiet and the stars are all out there and it's just you, the moon, and the stars. I don't care when it is, just pick your time to really do some reflecting within and figure out what it is that you want for 2023. Um, but what we're gonna go through quickly in these slides is just the business part of, but I don't want you to skip the soul work that you need to do in order to build a business that you truly enjoy doing. 
because at the end of the day, life is short and you just don't want to do things. I, I, there's just no reason to have a business built out that you don't like. Um, I do not know what is so different about today, but we are just going to accept today's challenge and figure out how to make it better. You guys on Zoom, can you see the slides? No. Okay. Y'all might just get a uh, authentic class with no slides, and I'm just going to speak it from the heart if this doesn't work here in a minute. I'm very passionate about business planning, so I could speak it from the heart and not slides if I got to. Uh, yeah, but I don't like that version of it. Okay, now do you guys see the slide on Zoom? All right. Brady, yeah, I'm we so can, glad we can see it. it. Okay, cool. All right, so building, creating, and you guys, this word says creating for a reason. You literally are self-employed in creating the life and the business that you want. Literally, whether you consciously or unconsciously do it. And I want you to consciously create a business that you really love doing. And if you don't do this pause and reflection part of that, then all you're doing is creating the business that just happens to happen for you instead of you being intentional about your business. For years and years and years, I had a business that I just, it was a business of circumstance. It was just a business that just happened. And I couldn't even tell you where it came from. I didn't track it in any way. So how in the heck could I duplicate it? Because I didn't know anything about where it came from and how it all worked. I just showed up every day. And if that's the way it is for you and you don't like just showing up and not really being intentional about the business and life that you're creating, then this is a perfect opportunity for you to really take in this information. So we're going to talk about building your foundation, knowing your numbers, which is really important, the goal setting and planning, and then marketing and generating, the lead generating piece of it. But then the financial planning of it all. I cannot in detail cover every one of these. This could be classes in itself. And I'm happy to build out a series if you guys are serious about creating businesses that you truly love. I'm happy to break every one of these down into individual classes and we can do them in my office in the basement. It's not a scary place, except at night. Um, but we'll do it at the day. And then really, if you guys wanted to, we could be an accountability partner group that meets once a month and really just builds this out. For so long, I thought business planning was all about, like, I had to, to, to plan it, set it, and then that's the way it is for 12 months. What I've learned is that things ebb and flow, and sometimes you just have to adjust. And so rather than be frustrated with what is, it's really time sometimes just to pause, reflect, and make some adjustments. And that's what would be kind of cool about doing something that's more of a accountability monthly thing, because as we see some changes going on, then, then we can ebb and flow our, our business plans. Um, but I just wanna quickly go through what I have for you guys today. So um, some of you are here because you want the CE credit. But I see a lot of you guys probably really questioning what's going on and how am I going to continue to make a living doing this business the way I enjoy doing the business without it costing me more than I can afford and also be paid for my time. So if you're here for that, then we can go deeper on a one-on-one -on -one conversation or like I said, we can do um, some more group, small group stuff. Um, for me, I get jazzed up about business planning. Like this, this stuff really fascinates me. I love to really look at the statistics and figure out what worked and why it worked. And sometimes it's guesses. Sometimes it's, it's real numbers that I can, that I can prove. Sometimes it's feelings and that's okay. So I just appreciate that you guys are here and that you're not um, just winging it. Hey, Cindy. So my goal for you guys is to really get to a place where you do have a plan. If you're new to business planning, please do not expect perfection. And please know that you don't have to have a fancy portfolio bound business plan. You just need to know where have I been and where do I wanna go? What do I need to change or what do I need to do differently to make it happen? Um, 
And if you don't have an accountability partner, I highly recommend that you guys get an accountability partner because this is hard to do alone. And there's just something about knowing that someone's going to ask you, what, what, you know, how, how'd your month end up? Was it what you expected? And what are you doing differently next month? Even if your accountability partner is just that person for you. I think accountability is super important. There's also a lot of coaching programs out there and I'm happy to remind, uh, to recommend. I know I, I've been part of the core, but there's also Tom Ferry. Um, Jennifer in this, in this room is, is um, works with, with Tom, right? Um, there is, uh, oh, what's his name? Todd Duncan. I mean, there's quite a few different programs out there Joe Stump, he, but they're all based on basically the same philosophies. Um, I, I'll, I'll, when, knowing your numbers is super important. There's going to be, there's a worksheet that I'm going to give you guys that has you guys really look, how many referrals did you get this month? I mean, this year, where did they come from and how well did they convert? Those are three pieces of really important information that you should always know. And then lastly, how much did each referral cost me? And how much did I make? So what is the net income on the different referrals based on their cost? And you gotta factor in time. So if you're gonna pay for a lead and you have to follow up, so let's just say it's an internet lead and, and I'm not knocking internet leads, as long as you have a process and a system for following up with the internet so that on those internet leads, so they actually convert, I think it's a great idea, but you better have a process and a system. Otherwise, because it's not a, just a one and done. I mean, you're gonna follow up on, on internet leads a lot of times for six to nine months, sometimes a year, your time is worth money. So you got to know what is my time worth from an hourly rate and how much time am I going to spend chasing this lead whenever you're figuring the cost of a lead. Um, I'll tell you a story that the first, the first coaching call I ever had about six years ago, the coach called me to prep me, you know, introduce himself and prep him himself. And it was a, it was a, the most money I had ever invested in myself and in my business huge investment for me at the time. I think it was five grand a month. Huge. And it was, it's one of the top coaching companies. It's really hard to get into. And this guy was the biggest hardcore coach there was in the freaking company. And I get him my first semester and he calls to do his prep, you know, introduction call. And he asked me my numbers and I didn't know my numbers and he ripped me a new one because it's like, how can you have been in business all these years and you don't know your numbers? Knowing your numbers are just really important. His lesson is so, I mean, like I know exactly lead to pre-qual, lead to pre-approval, lead to funded, pre-qual to, or pre-approval to funded. You guys want to know how many times we talk to people or how many People we have to talk to you to get to our numbers, ask me, because that's a lesson I learned the very hard way. And, um, but I, it's, it, I'm, it, it's important. You guys are running a business. You are the CEO of your company. And knowing this information, knowing your numbers is super important. So the numbers that you really need to know are is how many conversations do I need to have? What is my conversation to appointment ratio or conversion? Of those appointments, how many appointments do I need to get a listing or a buyer commitment? Y'all will get slides, but I love that you guys are taking notes because it's a better way of learning, which is why I'm having you guys do kinesthetic learning. Listings to close transactions. How many of your transactions fall out? You guys, we have had two contracts in the last 24 hours cancel within 24 hours of receiving the contracts. To me, that is a problem that we are going to experience until everybody gets better at negotiating repairs or negotiating people's emotions. If you've got a lot of transactions that are canceling, then I would start asking yourself, am I not managing emotions well? Because I think that's going to be our biggest challenge in 2023 is managing emotions of our people. They're getting buyer's remorse. 
sellers are getting frustrated, sellers are getting stubborn, some of them sellers are desperate, like you've got to understand emotions on a high level. And if you're not listening to podcasts, we're doing audio books and talking to people about the emotions of a buyer, you need to be. Chris Voss has got, I think, one of the best books on um, negotiating. I mean, I could give you a list of books to read and podcasts and audibles on understanding the psyche of a buyer in negotiating because we're going to continue to lose these transactions if we don't understand how to manage emotions. And is that in the stuff you're sending us? I can, BJ, remind me to send a list of books for managing emotions of the buyer psychology. Um, but I had a customer in my office yesterday and I'm telling, I was, I was telling the team earlier, I've got to get a box of Kleenex because I keep getting rolls of toilet paper out for people. And I'm like, how ghetto is that? I don't even have Kleenexes in my office, but I'm all about tears. I mean, if, 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 the, the, if you need to cry it out, let's cry it out because this is hard. And so, you know, she's just trying to apologize and hold back the tears. And I'm like, sister, just let those tears go. This is hard stuff. And her husband's just shaking his head going, and I'm like, it's okay. Y'all, we're going to have floods of emotion. So get those Kleenex boxes out and let people cry it out. But at the same time, you got to figure out what it is that they need in order to help them over all of these hard, hard feelings and questions and confusion that they have that they're dealing with. Because these listing to close, uh, your listings to close transactions are going to go down or if you don't. Close transactions to commission earned. It's really important you know, how much am I making on each transaction by average? What's your average commission per transaction? If you don't know that, you don't know how many transactions you need in order to reach your goals. If you don't know what your expenses, you don't know what your income needs to be, and then you gotta make a little money, right? Or a lot. And then your cost per lead, and it's gonna be different based on the lead. If you're big at managing your database, not only is it the cost of the subscription for your database, but what are you doing to nurture your database? So you're doing client appreciation parties. All right. How many people are going to come? How many are you going to invite? What's it going to cost? That's cost of a lead because you're asking for the referrals, right? But then you got to ask yourself, am I even asking for a referral or if I'm not just doing a good deed and expecting people to give me business because I did a good deed? Um, and then cost per sell. So how much is it costing you in your time, your gas, and the, the, you know, how many times did you print out paperwork for them? Did you put folders together? Are you emailing everything to them whenever you're assessing all your expenses? Are you printing paperwork out that you could just be giving them a PDF? Are they even throwing it away after you print it out? If you're holding open houses, how much money are you spending open houses on gadgets and stuff and time and money and gas and, and printouts? that don't get used. So all of that needs to be assessed. And that's why I say you cannot put a business plan in 24 hours because there's a lot of information that you need to gather to figure out really what do I want my 2023 to look like. Now, some of the conversations that you're gonna have that really matters is, is um, and, and why this matters is because the lead quality might need to change based on what you guys discover whenever you do the assessment. Maybe your leads, like you guys think that I, I mean, might think that I'm just being really particular whenever I tell you, if you're going to refer a, a lead to the castle team, I want you to use a specific email. And the reason is, is because I track my conversations to an actual application and my application to a pre-approval. And I know exactly what it takes in order to get you guys a buyer that you can go show a house to. And I know exactly what it takes in order for us to keep this buyer emotionally engaged to get them under contract. And I know exactly what it takes to keep them under contract to get them to the closing table. Why? Because I track it. And I'm very specific about how I want to be referred so that I can give you the results that you're expecting because your time is worth money too. So sometimes it's the lead quality that matters. Maybe you're working with someone you're not aligned with. You look at core values and like, man, I can't connect with this person. It's not a good lead quality. It doesn't matter if he works at TI and he's had this job forever and he's got some cash to work with. If he's not aligned with who you are, the lead quality may not be great. You guys just don't click. That's okay. The time and energy you're spending on someone you don't connect with is a waste if you can't get them to the closing table. 
So sometimes you're better off referring them to someone else in your office, get a little referral fee off of it and go work with someone that is easier for you to work with. Um, the contact strategy, it's important that you know how many times based on this type of referral source, am I gonna have to reach out to that person in order to get them to convert? And if I am reaching out all of these times, you look at your CRM, every time we talk to a customer, whether it's an email, phone call, or text message, we log it and the details of the conversation. Fortunately for us, our systems link up. So all we have to do is click a button and the emails go straight to the system. Most CRMs will do the same thing if you'll take the time to set them up like that. But if you notice and you, you've been talking to this, you know, you, you get to a point where it's like conversation after conversation after conversation after conversation, nothing's happening. And you see that and see a pattern of that. Maybe it's the contact strategy. Maybe you're not reaching out at the, well, if you're having conversations, you're actually reaching them, but maybe your contact strategy, you're not connecting. Well, why are you not connecting? Is it the time of day? Maybe you're not paying attention to the fact that this person's a third shift person and they're sleeping. No wonder you're not reaching them. So your contact strategy might need to change. Sometimes it's all about scripting. And again, I think that's one of the biggest values of being in a coaching program is sharing scripts with people. But they're scripts that you can obtain from all over places. And sometimes it's just mindset. You're just, your mind's not in the right place at the right time whenever you're having conversations, but it's on your calendar to reach out to people. Well, it's not necessarily going to convert. So this particular realtor, what I wanted you, what I found really interesting, Tim Smith, Cobalt Banker, sells a ton of properties. His goal every day is five conversations with five people he knows. Five conversations with five people he doesn't know. Where do you find those? Grocery store, doctor's office. Yep. And, you know, you can have conversations. We were talking yesterday on a coaching call. I mean, just showing up at events and actually mingling around and having conversations with people you don't know. Showing up at the ball fields and getting close enough to a parent when you're watching a game that you start engaging in the conversation. I say it all the time. If you go to a room and you're quiet long enough, you sit in the room and it's a group of people. I'm telling you within 30 minutes, a conversation is going to come up around houses. People are fascinated with houses and right now the conversation about what's going on in the market or what houses are worth is always coming up or a home improvement um, project every time. So it's really easy if you're very intentional, you're at the ball fields at 630 and you're like, man, I've only had three conversations with people I don't know. And you get close enough to someone that you can start carrying on a conversation. You can make that conversation go to, hey, where do you guys live? Where your kids going to school is so easy to guide those conversations. So then, then you know, for for me, my go to is always to friend. Hey, I'm going to send you a friend request on Facebook so we can stay connected. Is that cool with you? Then Facebook becomes my database. Well, then I can also carry that. Con I'll start liking and commenting on their stuff. Not stalkerish, but I just you know, we, we've got kind of somewhat of a relationship. I mean, we're both at the ball field. So we, someone we care is on the field, right? And so you can really start engaging in a conversation and turn a, someone that you don't know into someone that you do know pretty quickly. So if you have it in your head, I got to talk to five people I know, five people I don't know today. And I got to have four conversations with leads that I'm following up on. Whatever the status of the lead is, and then I'm going to do two videos per day or per week. I highly recommend, you got to be doing at least two videos a week. Two videos a day is kind of much. But just get yourself a formula and hold yourself accountable for a process. To me, I like throwing in thank you cards. There is nothing better than getting a heartfelt thank you card, just a handwritten card. It doesn't even matter if they can read your writing or not. They see your return address and they know you put thought and in, in, intent into your card. So go into your database and just, I, I mean, five cards a week. If you just what did one thank you card a week out of people in your database. Um, those conversations turn into transactions. So let's look at the conversion. So how many conversations, I mean, if you had 40 conversations, how many would it, uh, transactions can you expect? So if your transaction goal is 24, 24 transactions, 40 conversations, you would need, so you got to have 
uh, 40 convert, if your goal is to have 24 conversation uh, transactions in a year, and you know that it takes 40 conversations to have one transaction, that would be 960 total transactions, uh, conversations. That would be cool, wouldn't it? That'd be great. You're going to need a big team for that. Yeah. You're going to be in a really te big team for that. Um, and again, you're going to get these data, you're going to get this information so that you can see how many transactions. So based on 24 transactions in a year, that's two a month, you need 960 total conversations. And I'm not talking about high house, the weather, it's cold outside. I'm talking about real conversations, conversations that you turn into something, somebody you can put into a database. All right. So 960 total conversations of people that you talked housing, they know that you're a realtor and you put them in some kind of follow-up system. We're dividing that out into 10 months because you're gonna need some time to yourself, right? So that's 96 conversations per month. If you divide that out, because I don't want you guys working 24 seven, seven days a week, that's not sustainable, you're gonna drop out. So if you just figure 20 working days a month, then how many conversations do you need a day? Five good quality conversations. So if you focus on five people you know, five people you don't know, are you gonna have those conversations? Four good follow-ups, following up on your database, asking for a referral, reminding them that you would love to help everybody that they work with, their friends, their family, you'll continue to grow your database. And if you continue to grow your database and you stay in touch with people, it's achievable to have 24 transactions a year. If your goals are bigger than that, great, multiply and figure out how many more conversations you need to have in order to do that. Now, in order to convert those conversations, you are gonna have to get really good at managing emotions. You have got to get effective at rebuilding rapport. And it's going to require some intentional conversation, which we also sometimes call scripting. And ask a lot of questions because questions will lead the conversation. He who asks the most questions is, or he who asks questions is leading the conversation. So Ask, I mean, one answer, if you ask a question, if I ask Lewis, hey, Lewis, how was your morning? It was great. What was great about it? I'm alive. I woke up. Oh, I, I love that. Nice. What a great positive attitude. Have you always been that way? Um, I think so, yeah. I just got back to my trip, so. Oh, where did you go? Uh, Portugal. Ah, yeah. too cool. No wonder we haven't seen you in classes. So glad you're here today. My point is, you guys just continue to ask questions. Furthermore, it makes people feel like you're way more. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm truly fascinated in that in more information, but you learn a lot about people pretty quickly. Now, then the goal is to go write it down really fast so you don't forget all of these little nuances that really matter in a relationship, right? All right, so um, the... The, the listing to close transactions. So, I mean, I could go through every one of these scenarios and show you how being very intentional about the conversations and the follow-up matters whenever you're trying to put a business plan together. So what, um, for the sake of time, and you guys are gonna get these slides, so don't worry about what you're missing. What is really important is you guys are doing a business plan. You're gonna get these slides and you're gonna go through these slides and, and Tiffany, you, you're, you're new to the business. So you're not gonna have the history to go through, but you have life experiences. You have a job prior to real estate and you can apply this. Cindy, it's been a little while since you've been back into the real estate market. So you're gonna have to really think about what am I doing right now in my life what did I do in the past and how do I want to build my business around that to make sure that I am doing business with uh, the leads that I get or with people I enjoy. And then, but it's really important that you not do your business just based on feelings. You got to break it down to the numbers and the dollar signs. So I'm not being good at that. 
Yeah. Well, it's hard because it really requires that you put time on your calendar. That's another thing you guys write down when each month, are you going to sit down and review your business like a business? My daughter's got a brand new business. She does a fabulous job of marketing, of displaying her retail items. She does a fabulous job of building her audience. She's very specific about her audience. My next goal for her, and in fact, I'm meeting with, with someone to help her tomorrow, is to really understand the numbers of it all. Like if you, if she were to think of a retail space as every square foot in this retail, in this spot, how much is it making me? And getting really good at the numbers part of it. Because she could love what she's doing, but bankrupt herself at the same time. And it's really easy to do that in real estate too especially since you guys are running your business a lot of times out of your cars. Yeah. So you don't want to, you don't want to be doing a business that you truly love that later you go, this is I, that, I mean, that's heart wrenching when you have to stop doing something you truly love because you can't afford to do it anymore. So knowing the information about where is my business going to come from and what is it going to cost me? not just to get that lead, but to continue to nurture that lead to turn it into a transaction. And then how do I turn that one transaction into multiple referrals? You should be, re you should get at least two referrals off of every transaction. So you can grow your business exponentially, but you got to stay in touch with people. They got to remember you. And so what's that going to cost? And then, especially if you're on the listing side, well, actually on all sides, what is the sale costing you? And being able to track that is really important too. So how many of you guys have a, have a separate business account for your real estate business? I highly recommend you do that. Because you need to be able to look at your activities once a month and see everything that's gone out and tie it to some part of your business. So if you just spent, like for me, I'm fixing to do, we're fixing to do our Santa event. Um, we just did our blues and barbecue. How many, pe you know, how many people did I market to? How many people showed up? So how much did I pay per person that came? But I still had food left over that I got to factor in there too. So that really is going to go towards everybody that came. So even though they only ate one sandwich, if I ended up with X number of sandwiches left over, it really cost me more than just that one sandwich that they ate, right? Like you have to be really intentional about that. But also what, what did I spend in our time? And, and how, you know, and so you just really have to factor in if you're going to do business, um, what are all those expenses tied to that one activity? So if you're going to do a client appreciation event, you know, are you going to send mailers out? And then you got the cost of the event itself. You got the cost of your time for putting the event together, for planning and coordinating how many people showed up. Um, and because you're going to want to assess that and determine if you want to continue to do it that way or if you need to do it differently. Um, same thing whenever you guys are um, doing your open houses or whenever you're listing a property, it can get really expensive to list a property. Pictures are the quality of the pictures are so important because people are going online and they're picking houses based on the quality of the pictures. So I know whenever you're assessing all your expenses, you're like, well, could I save some money doing this? instead of doing that. But you also got to understand your brand, your reputation, and the quality of how you're presenting yourself. So be very mindful whenever you're looking at cutting expenses, where you're cutting expenses, and make sure you're cutting expenses in smart ways. Um, so the business plan and the review. So what you guys are going to get in your handout. And again, I'm happy if you guys will email me back and say, hey, I'm interested in taking this to the next level on more of a smaller intimate group around the table. We can workshop all of this stuff out. But you're going to get a vision. It's really important that very clear with what your vision is. And then you really need to come up with a mission statement and your values. Um, I can give you some worksheets to help you with that, but you're also going to get enough examples that I think that it would be really easy for you guys to come up with your own mission, your vision, 
And then your core values exercise was just in your, your uh, paperwork from last week. Louis, I can get you a copy of that. Uh, BJ, actually put that core values exercise back in this one too as handouts in case people didn't attend because I think that's so important. So here's some examples of mission statements so you can see how simple that is and it really does not need to be fancy. Look at this one mission, to inspire a positive lasting impact. It does not, you do not overthink this. Your values are going to come straight off of your value worksheet. Super simple. Um, but it's really important that you have that, that clarity whenever you're putting your business plan together. <laughs> um, um, so some of the clarity questions that you're going to ask yourself is who do you want to serve and what problems will you solve? We talked about that last week. Who is your ideal client? What problems do they have? What, pro what solutions can you offer? And why is this so important? It's pretty easy to put that part together if you're speaking from the heart. Don't fancy it up. And then the, the, the business plan itself that you guys are going to receive is really breaking down that transaction. So you're going to break it down to where did my business come from? You can look for your business source. You can look back for the last 12 months. Just know that the numbers might change just because we're, we're in a little bit of a shift right now in the market. And I think people right now emotionally are zoning out on us. And probably will until, I, I think that they're going to zone out on us until spring. I think the holidays have got them pretty distracted. Well, the news and the holidays and elections have them distracted. They'll get out of holiday mode and the cold weather is going to have them hibernating. And then as soon as the sun comes out and the tulips start blooming, they'll, they'll come out. The problem is what I think has going to happen. And I talk to, I tell every home buyer I talk to you, Every one of you guys that are waiting until the spring are also waiting with everybody else that's going to come back out into the market in the spring. And if you paid attention to what happened and why prices have been pushed up, it's because of supply and demand. And we're going to have that issue again about the same time everybody's going to start moving to this area. But it's like talking to my kids sometimes. Blah, 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 blah. They're not listening to me. So, um, you can use your numbers as your close, you know, where your business came from. So use, use the data that you have. All right. Um, and then you, after you have that, go ahead and do your numbers because that does help you figure how much money you're spending, you know, what your average commission, how much money you're spending for the leads, all of that will still be relevant. Now, I'm not sure you can count on that same number or a little bit greater unless you have some really cool strategy. And I hope you do. That's great. Um, if you're wanting to increase those numbers, I think you got to get really good at managing emotions. Uh, business plan, then whenever you get this next worksheet that you're going to be able to convert. My whole goal is for you guys to know what do I need to do today to reach my goals. That part is really important and don't let, I mean, I don't care if you have to have a sticky note on the dashboard of your car. Don't let yourself go home until you get that thing done that you've got to do today in order to reach your goals. So um, if it, if, you know, if you've got to have X number of conversations and X number of appointments. We used to use a greatness tracker. I kind of still wish that I had my handwritten greatness tracker instead of my fancy uh, Salesforce dashboard. I look at my dashboard every day, but it's not the same as writing it down. I do have some really good forms that you can carry around with you that keeps track of every conversation you've had as they've converted and then all of your activities. Every activity leads to a result and it measures the result. At the end of every week, we used to turn that into each other and see if we all met what was required of us in order to reach our goals. And if you're that serious about your business, I've got the tools to make that happen. Then you just need an accountability partner. But you're also going to get your projected units um, sold for us. What I expect my first quarter to look like and what my second quarter looks like is always different. So I think it's really important that you're breaking your goals down based on um, what's going, you know, what's typical for the market. If you've been doing this for a long time, it's a lot easier to track that. If not, get with somebody who has been in the business for a little while and make sure that your, your goals are realistic because you really don't want to be judging yourself. 
I mean, you want to hold yourself accountable, but you don't want to beat yourself up. And setting some unrealistic goals will have you in a place where you, you might be beating yourself up for unrealistic expectations. All right. So then it's a matter of putting the marketing plan together. Like, okay, if I want to do X number of transactions and I'm going to focus on buyers and I'm going to focus more specifically on move up buyers, that means I'm going to get sellers too. So for me, I think that one of the problems that move up buyers have is how in the heck do you time buying and selling your home? You need the equity from your home in order to buy your new home. But the thought of all of that is very overwhelming when you have kids that you're chasing around and ball games to go to and homework to follow up on. And now you got to get your house ready to sell and keep it clean while you're selling. So if move up buyers is your thing, then all of your branding, all of your marketing would be speaking to the struggles of that move up buyer. Well, if that's the case, then what's your marketing plan going to be in order to speak to them? So who is your audience and how are you going to get their attention? What are their struggles and what solutions do you have to offer them? And then networking plan. If move up buyers is your people, where are those people? Where are you going to find them to have those five conversations of people you don't know once a day? Where are you going to go? Maybe you're hanging out at the school. For me, first time home buyers are more in the elementary schools, right? So I would be more involved in the elementary schools. If I was working on move up buyers, I think that I would, you know, that's going to be your high school and your college kids or, or maybe some of the, I mean, move up buyers can be anybody that is on house number two. So what age group are they in and what are they doing? Where do I find them and how do I go get in the middle of them so I can have five conversations with people I don't know a day? It's easy to find five, five people to talk to that you know. How are you going to find people that you don't know? Where well, you're going to go to wherever it is, the people that you want to do business with. Um, and then you've got your follow-up plan. So, you know, after you've met these people, what's your plan for staying in touch with these people? And then what's your nurturing plan? You got, um, you got people that you've done business with. Hello, there's your move-up buyers. They've already bought the one house. If, if, you know, it's maybe the third or fourth house. It doesn't matter. They've already bought a house. People buy houses every five to seven years. So what are you doing to stay in touch with them? Because those are also your move-up buyers, right? So you're going to put a plan together um, and just, uh, just the basics. And then what will I do and where do I need accountability? Because this piece is really important. You can put this, all of these forms together. And I'm telling you, if you do this right, you're going to spend 10 to 12 hours doing this. So after you put all of this stuff together, who it's just fancy paperwork unless you're holding yourself accountable. And the percentage of people that will actually hold themselves accountable and then review this information once a month is really, really slim. And I would love for you guys to be the exception. There is over 700 real estate agents in this association. And the fact that you're here for this class <coughs> means that you care or you need the CE. Or both. <clears throat> but it is really hard. This is the part that's really hard. Y'all's job is hard in general. Our jobs, all of our jobs in this industry are super hard. But <laughs> running your business like a business is, is uh, definitely takes some commitment. And then it's really important that you hold yourself accountable. If you don't already have a budget, that is really important that you do. I do have a class coming up in about a month. And I have a, a gentleman coming to teach the class that is a financial coach. And he hit the class is how to thrive on our commission roller coaster. The budget piece is really important. I would prefer you guys really focus on the business planning part of it, knowing that we've got a class for the financial piece of it. Okay. Um, because the business planning part of it is already going to take some, some time to do. You don't know when that is, do you? Um, no, but I'll put it, I'll, I'll put that also. BJ, put the, uh, thriving, um, on the commission roller coaster link. It's, it's on every, all of the classes that I do is always on my michellecastle.info page. Click on the education tab and all of my classes are on there. And then there's another list of all of the classes I can teach that are CE that, that I don't have scheduled yet. The business, the, the financial planning class is not a CE. It is just because you guys have asked for it for years and I have not provided it. And he offered and I said, heck yeah, let's do it. Um, 
that is one of the biggest reasons and one of the biggest ahas for me in a coaching program. The coaching program that I was involved with is was very, very strict about our finances and very strict about how much I put in savings and how much I gave away in our community. Very strict. And I'm telling you, I picked up so many habits that have been life changing for generations because of the financial accountability. And it was the hardest conversation for me to start with my husband because I really did not want to look at our finances together. Um, we had we had financially struggled about 12 years ago. I got really sick about the same. No, it was oh, it was six. So it was in 2006. How long ago was that? Six or seven? Yeah. And, and we really, I mean, we, we, it, we had to file bankruptcy. I mean, it was just, it was just ugly. And so I've always, it's like been one of those taboo conversations since then. So I really needed this financial accountability, but I'm telling you from a business standpoint, there's no way I could sustain what we're about to go through and still keep everything together without having the discipline that I had back then. So the financial piece of it is really near and dear to my heart. Um, I understand the emotional roller coaster that you're on when finances aren't aligned with our dreams and our goals. I really do. And in fact, it makes my heart just skip a beat just thinking about that, because I know right now it might be a struggle. I mean, I know it's a struggle for a lot of people right now. So even putting this together might be hard. But I want you to put your emotions aside from that aspect of it. And we all have our own money stories. We do. It's just past experiences that we have that we're carrying into the future and it's really blocking our future. So I want you guys to put those money stories aside enough to put your dreams and goals together, but realistic dreams and goals and then action plan to make it happen, knowing that we'll talk about the finances in, a, in about a month. All right. So um, um, I want to pause right there. There's some more slides, but I really want to open up to have some conversation because I am so passionate about the business planning part of it because for so long I was just willy-nilly in my, my business and I did not even know how many transactions, I couldn't tell you how many transactions I closed for many, many years. And I feel it's so important that you pause and take the time to really, this time of year is a perfect time to do that. We're rolling into Thanksgiving. It's a month to be grateful and be appreciative of what we have and what we are to receive when our heart's in the right place. And you guys really have the uh, um, opportunity to be in an abundance mindset. You got two weeks to figure out all of your baggage and get out of the, the fear mindset and get into the abundance and grateful mindset. And the best way to do that is to make a list every single day of the things that you're grateful for. If you start your morning making a list of the things you're grateful for and end the day with the things that you're grateful for, you will find more things to be grateful for throughout the day. And as you're doing that, I want you to reflect on all of these businesses, um, all of these opportunities and all of the conversations and just observe. Walk around with the notebook paper stuffed in your pocket or just somewhere or use your phone and just start observing so that in November, you've got some time to really, you've got notes that you can reflect on to start putting that business plan together. So you're really creating a business and a life that you love from a place of gratitude and abundance and not fear. All right. Um, I really firmly believe there is a lot of opportunities out there for buyers and sellers. The fact they don't see it yet just means we need to do better at managing emotions and doing a better job of communicating from our heart. And we can do that collectively. Michelle, yeah. driving on commission income roller coaster class is on November the 16th, 10 a.m. at the GTA office. It is not on Zoom. Okay. Yes. Um, and I did it in a, as an in-person class because I really want you guys to focus and be able to actually pin and paper it out. Um, 
to, to get the most out of it. Landon, I know that means for you, you've got a crew that might need to travel this way and you guys are still welcome. I know a lot of your, your team may not be members here, but they're still welcome. Thank you. Some of them are, but thank you. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll be worth the drive. And if we run out of room in here, I mean, if it looks like there's going to be more in attendance than what we have room for here, we'll find room so that everybody has the ability to pen and paper it out. Not that you're going to have your personal finances here with you, but I mean, still, I mean, you'll off the top of your head because there's just something about learning with the pen and paper in hand and using your real life information. Um, does anybody have any further questions that, uh, or anything that they would, Landon, you've been, oh, did Landon, did you leave me? Oh, no, you're there. I'm here. Do you have, as a team lead, I know that you're sitting down with your team right now and putting together business planning. Um, would you, would you like to add any information that you're doing with your team or any aha moments or anything you'd like to share? Well, I mean, everything that you touched on today in terms of preparing for, the next year, really tracking your business. Like you said, like you, you didn't know your numbers for a little while. You couldn't state how long, sorry, how many properties you have financed over the years. And I, I wasn't either initially taught how to track my business and without tracking your business, you have no ability to scale without knowing your numbers and your, like you said, your finances, both personal and business, because your business is to fund your life, right? Mm -hmm. Without yeah. both of those in place, what we did, we did this years ago after I was taught, this was back in 2015 or so, we put together the business budget, of course, but we also put together the household budget. Like what is everything that is known? The mortgage, the internet, the whatever. And then Everything else, of course, is unknown, but what we did is we went back, it took a little bit of time, but for about 30 minutes, we went back over a three-month window and said, this is what we spend on average each month on food or entertainment or whatever your categories are, which is like, okay, great, but then for us, we went a step further and we actually put a, uh, like a max budget on that. Like, hey, I know the average of the unknown expenses but we're now going to track it and make sure that we don't go beyond mm. x y and z for each month so you start knowing your finances you start knowing your numbers all of that everything you said with putting people into your database knowing how many people you're talking to how do those relationships convert are they a met and unmet what does all this look like all of that starts allowing you to answer questions of how do i scale how much harder do i push how much more effort is required? Can I start a team? Can I afford a team? Can I afford contracts to close? Like all these things start being answered because you're doing one activity and it's tracking your numbers, be it financial or your business. But all of that, I don't really, I guess to answer, I don't have really anything to add other than to just affirm everything that has been said is super, super crucial to being able to grow in this industry because you may determine like 2019 for me focused on production before I had the, the company that I have, like that was my highest income earning year ever. But I told myself that I don't want to have to work that hard. If it means earning that much money, I'm fine making less if I'm able to be home with my kids or my wife or go hunting or, you know, whatever I'm, I'm fine doing that. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But I wouldn't have that clarity if I didn't know my numbers. So now for someone on this call that wants to be super duper high achiever or someone who wants to sustain their business, you're okay in either lane that you want to play in. You may even want to scale back. Hey, I sold 36 last year. I only want to do 24 this year. Average prices have gone up, you know, whatever, just in Great. general, and I'll shut up, knowing your answers, oh, I love it. knowing your data, knowing your numbers is super, super crucial. So how long do you recommend each month people sit down and pay attention? I, I guess it depends on what tools and resources you have. I mean, if it's sure. just a spreadsheet and you plug in some basic information, it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, on average, how much time do you advise people to spend working on their business, knowing their numbers? In terms of knowing your numbers, if you have, even if you build 
a, I say a software, if you build an Excel spreadsheet mm -hmm. that has property address, client name, close date, sales price, and commission earned, mm -hmm. that stuff is happening as you execute deals. So that's kind of like instantaneous as you're flowing through the day, but cumulatively that probably ends up being a 30 minute to one hour per month exercise. Um, and so you, what you end up doing is like right now, all of October, like everything, the, the 30, 90 rule, whatever you do in a 30 day window shows up in a 90 day window. So all the work right. we're doing today, although we may have closing from today's efforts in December, everything that we're doing today is really for Q1. It's for and Q1. So putting all those things in motion, all those pieces together, it's like, it's kind of the grunt work. Like we have stuff that we're going to be working on here in the next two months before end of year. So that when Q1 gets here, we're not bogged down quite literally with like crap. Like we don't want to deal with that in Q1 because what we've done now is going to kind of springboard us into the next year. And then Q1 rolls you into Q2. It just, it keeps building on, on, on itself. But every time that you're working, you're working 90 days out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys, I mean, you guys do realize it. Whatever you're doing today will show up in your pocketbook 90 days from now or won't. So it's your, your, whatever you do in the next 30 days will pay off in the next 90. Which is, which is weird, right? I mean, probably. It's that lag. It's that lead and lag. Yeah. It's like in our DNA, it's probably ingrained in our DNA by now for instant gratification. So it's weird, like your mind, your body, everything pushes back on the fact that you did your activities today and had no immediate results. You're like abandoned ship, I'm done, let's go the other way, let's do something else. But it's those little daily activities that you literally just mind numbingly do over and over and over and over. It's those things that build a really big business. It's doing a few things really well, not 30 or 40 things okay. Yep. Yep. I love it. You're speaking my language. All right. Does anybody else have any questions or anything to add? Landon's a great resource. He preaches it. He lives it. Um, as you guys had heard. And, um, so you've got some great resources in our community. Reach out. Um, we're all in this together. I mean, we all work with different labels, but at the end of the day, we're all here to serve our community and um, serve it well. And if it's not you, who will it be? And would they serve as well as you? So get out there. Don't let fear paralyze you. If you have any questions or any concerns, address it with people that you respect and, and get your mind right to get out there and go, go do the activities um, because it, it matters. It really matters. Um, so next week, we're going to talk about content strategy because we talked about growing an authentic business and making sure that your brand is aligned with really, truly who you are. Today, we talked about business planning, and I know you guys have got your heads full of all kind of information. Next week, we're going to talk about switch it up just a little bit, content strategy, because we could say something, but if the strategy is not right, nobody heard it. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that um, next week. And that is the end of this series. Um, the, the financial class is just a one-off because you guys have asked for it and it, we will have a break. Um, but as long as you guys are willing to learn, I, have, I, I'm, I love teaching. So you just tell me if you guys wanna continue on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock and I'll keep it on my calendar, but I need to know what it is that you guys would like some help with. If it's more round table, workshop stuff, that's fine too. I've got all of the tools and resources. And, and if 